Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. As always, you leaving a like, you leaving a comment, or you subscribing does help the channel out very, very much. They are always very much appreciated. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Currently, at the moment, the cryptocurrency market isn't looking too bad. It says Bitcoin price analysis, Bitcoin unable to break $45,000 resistance falls by 2%. For some odd reason, and I'm not exactly sure why, Bitcoin is having a little bit of difficulty passing by the $45,000 region. There were a number of articles out there uh, discussing why this was a hurdle, why this was an issue. And of course, if we pass by it, uh, $47,000 is the number that we're looking for. For Bitcoin to properly show that there, you know, that the bull trend is completely intact and therefore we have completed a complete uh, reversal. Uh, the only thing I can think of whenever I see articles like this or hear news like this is especially, don't forget, it's only been roughly around seven days. Don't forget, Bitcoin had troubles passing by 38,000 and Bitcoin had a hurdle at 39,000. Bitcoin had, you know, a rough time passing by 40,000. Bitcoin was going to have a rough time passing by $42,000 and $43,000, and then we got to $44,000, and everyone seemed completely surprised. Uh, I don't think that there, my, this is my opinion, after having been in the market for a number of years, I don't think that there are any actual hurdles or real barriers. It's more of a uh, whales behind the scenes who know exactly how much they have to put into or take out of the market to be able to move it in a certain way. It was even estimated a couple of weeks ago that we were still in the midst of a sort of uh, reaccumulation period after prices had fallen by more than 50%. And over the course of that same exact four, five, six month period, we had news roughly every 55 hours that whales were buying up huge amounts of cryptocurrencies, even as the prices continue to move downward. This one says Ethereum price analysis, Ethereum drops 2%, $3,100 holding strong. A lot of, if you read through the actual articles, I'm, t I'm paraphrasing and telling you as opposed to have to go through them. Um, a lot of them are saying that this is actually really good, that we are having a bit of a pullback, a bit of a slowdown. I told you before, the news that we got from a number of people yesterday and the day before that they were expecting Bitcoin to hit a, a brand new all-time high in the next 19 days was a little scary because whenever we've heard news like that before, there usually is always a, a very dramatic pullback in price by about 15 to 20%. People begin to panic and they go, is this the end? Is Bitcoin going to fall? Why is Bitcoin falling so much? It's usually because we've moved up so much in a short period of time. So a type of pullback or investors taking whatever profits that they may want to skim off the top to say, hey, I've made some extra money. Let's continue putting other money or into the market, what have you, so on and so forth is actually pretty good because any pullback that we experience that isn't 15%, that isn't 25% is also very good for the market as well. I'd rather wake up and see that we've had a 1% to 2% fall than a 17% fall in Bitcoin's price after we've been going up for the last couple of days. It says Bitcoin reverses its trajectory after touching $45,000, but mega whales are buying. No surprise at all in any way, shape, or form. We continuously get news like this, and I assume we will get news like this for a very, very long time. It's usually not even just Bitcoin. It's usually Bitcoin, Ethereum. We've had whales buying Shiba Inu and Cardano news and whales filling up on XRP because of the expectation of the lawsuit being over. So I imagine often that behind the scenes, uh, the largest players out there in the space are accumulating as much as they possibly can while prices are still very depressed and still very low. These prices are completely laughable, especially if you look at where we were before, the levels of adoption that we have, the amount of even if you want to look towards the regulatory space as, as a metric, the amount of times that we've heard, hey, Bitcoin's not banned, just pay taxes on it, as opposed to Bitcoin's completely banned, don't you dare touch it in this country, is quite remarkable, especially over once again, the last five or six months. So I'm, I'm expecting any type of I mean, realistically, we could move up to $48,000 over the course of this afternoon. It's just a matter of if the money behind the scenes is actually put into the market and then everyone else sees that the market is moving back up because it always takes other people as well. 
It's kind of, um, for, for those of you who've been here for a very long time, this is like a very long running joke. Uh, Bitcoin can be $20,000 and it falls down to 3000 Cool. Uh, no one wants to touch it. No one wants to buy any of it. And I remember repeating multiple times, like, why is no one buying any Bitcoin? I don't understand. Uh, but the moment Bitcoin goes up to 9000 this is when people begin to rush back into the market as opposed to buying it when it's at $3,000. And even back then, we were having whale news about all these people buying up tons of Bitcoin when the prices were lowest. Anyway, um, it says, no new lows. Parabolic Bitcoin indicator could suggest a local bottom is in. Yeah, the movement down, air quotes, that we are currently seeing right now across the board by literally just 1% or 2% is a very good indicator that we are hitting bottoms. As people are selling off, the sell-off isn't as massive, and therefore it keeps hitting a a high low if that makes any sense and therefore at any moment from now uh, we could see a movement back up i i started looking around just to see if i could find any extra information on anything that was happening within the uh, stock market there was a it was really kind of weird uh stocks are kind of all over the place uh, between tech stocks and normal stocks uh the fluctuations are quite high we're not seeing the same amount of correlation that we saw for the last two or three months with the stock market which is absolutely excellent but the amount of articles floating around on Yahoo Finance, Bloomberg, uh, Morningstar, et cetera, et cetera, uh, having analysts and people discussing that they think that the stock market is about to collapse like right now, we're rather high. It says stock market is showing signs of cracking and bursting. This was said by a Harvard lecturer. There were a lot of articles, not even just about this person who, who was talking about the movements in the market. Uh, but it has to do a lot with uh, things have been overvalued for a very long time and kind of like look out below as the market uh, is going to crack. So, of course, uh, we will see if the the stock market does indeed crash. It's well overdue for it. Um, I've been watching a lot of reports. I, For those of you who don't know, I don't live in the States, but I try to keep up with news from around the world just to really see what's going on. And I saw something yesterday and I sent the photo to my friends about it. Hello, friends. Uh, I think it was something along the lines of like rental prices during everything that's been going on the last two years. Rental prices in the States have gone up between 24 to 36 percent when when demand has actually like not leveled out or increased as much. It's more like a there are still places for people to live more or less, but the rate of inflation, the rate of the cost of living, how rapidly it's going up just within the States, of course, other places it's happening as well, is actually rather frightening. Even the cost of homes, some some places, they were showing like random states like Miami, New York, Arizona, etc., had gone up by around 115% around the same amount of time. I just really, really uh, weird stuff going on. I'm not sure if it's a product of inflation, if we are on the cusp of hyperinflation, what have you. Uh, but these are very worrying numbers when it comes to like, if, if this is what's happening now, imagine five years from now. None of that is actually sustainable. Um, anyway, that's all the price news. Very sparse. There weren't even many other, uh, you know, like the random altcoin one, like why is XRP down by 1.0.249%? Could it be the lawsuit? Really weird things like that. Nothing else was in the news. Uh, so yeah, that's all the price news. And without further ado, let's move on. In the most popular news story of the day, and also the weirdest one, I'll try to explain it to you in the nicest way possible without... Uh, going on a rant. The government and Central Bank of Russia have allegedly reached an agreement on how to regulate cryptocurrencies, according to a Tuesday announcement. Russia's government and Central Bank are now working on a draft law that will define crypto as an analog of currencies rather than digital financial assets, set to be launched on the 18th of February. Cryptocurrencies would function in the legal industry only if they have complete identification through the banking system or licensed intermediaries. Commerçant noted that Bitcoin transactions and possession of cryptocurrency in the Russian Federation are not prohibited. However, they must be done through a digital currency exchange organizer, 
a bank, or a peer-to-peer exchange licensed within the country. The report also highlighted that cryptocurrency transactions of more than 600,000 rubles, around $8,000, would have to be declared or be considered a criminal act. Those who illegally accept cryptocurrencies as payments would attract fines. This idea, I assume from the wording, would have to do with what we were talking about yesterday. We're in the States. If you are buying a cup of coffee and the cup of coffee is used with crypto, therefore that is a taxable event. We've seen a number of countries announce that. They're putting forth something uh, not similar, but like, you know, kind of the inverse, you know, if you are buying something that is less than 400 euros or so and so and so, therefore there's no taxable event that takes place. So backing it up, uh, this was the most popular news story of the day. Not many things cause me to scratch my head, to be a little confused or to go, what what in the world is is going on? A lot of you may remember, it's been no more than two weeks ago. I mean, really just two weeks ago. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Russia proposes ban on use and mining of cryptocurrencies. And I was like, cool, that's fine, just ban it. So many countries continue to, actually it's only about four different countries on the planet, the same ones over and over, continue to announce continually that they are going to ban cryptocurrencies. You know what? We don't have that much of a problem with crypto, but it's still not allowed. No, 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 no. We're going to ban it. It's terrible. You can't mine it. You can't use it. We could see how crypto could be used, but still not here. We're going to ban it. We're going to, and it's, it's happened over and over and over. So the fact that this news came out this morning, no more than a couple of days ago when the government was talking about banning it, and then we had the other news... Uh, about the president saying uh, that he saw merit in cryptocurrencies and therefore it should not be banned. Once again, it implores you just as a human being alive on this planet to learn how actual law works in many other countries and who actually has the final say on all of these things. You know, hint. Um, For those of you not looking at the screen, this is an article from 2020. There was also one from 2021, multiple, as you might have imagined. It says, Russia wants to ban cryptocurrency. Surprise, surprise, surprise. This is an article from the 2nd of December, 2019. It says, Russia's central bank is ready to ban cryptocurrency payments. Are you seeing a pattern here? This one is from the 8th of May, 2017. It says... Russia will have blockchain regulation in place by 2019. That is, of course, something that never took place. There were a number of countries by the middle and the end of 2017 who had either announced that they were going to accept and not adopt, but regulate cryptocurrencies and or ban it by the beginning of 2018 to the end of 2018. If I remember even this time frame correctly... It was supposed to be by the very first of 2019, they would have some type of regulation in place. And this is the news that we were talking about before, where the actual proposed plan was to basically basically only allow people who were rich and or, uh, um, what's the word? Not retail investors, but uh, whatever higher ranking investors to be able to invest in the market and everyone else would be fined if they tried to do so. We've had news for four, almost five years now that they've been trying to ban cryptocurrencies. We also had it a couple of days ago as well. And now a lot of people, uh, and I don't understand why people do it. And I don't think my mind is meant to understand why they do it. We're actually praising this news as something absolutely wonderful and incredible. Uh, This is the word propaganda pops up really quickly in into my mind. This is a, a another type of manipulation in the market that I, I I don't think people see as actual manipulation. Have you ever seen, and I, once again, watch documentaries. I, I know I mention this every single day. It's really good for the mind. Watch documentaries on how banks uh, manipulate the gold and silver market because it's very prominent. It happens all the time. Or what any country can do, especially those who are very heavy with petroleum, uh, are able to do, to actually lower the prices of oil and then also make them skyrocket once again. It doesn't take a lot of effort, especially if you are an entire country as opposed to a a company. So as it stands right now, um, not that I was ever thinking of holding my breath for this kind of news 
in the first place. Uh, we've had this news multiple times. Remember the news that we continuously got from India? Uh, we're going to ban crypto. Crypto is not that bad. We have regulations for cryptocurrencies coming by the end of 2019. Goes to parliament. There's no thing for cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are banned in India. Cryptos aren't that bad. We're going to have regulation for cryptocurrencies by the middle of 2020. And it continues going on and on and on and on. But the really, really weird part is that we always get a date for it. The weirdest part. We always get parliament session winter, parliament session spring, parliament session so-and-so. This is going to happen on the 18th of February. Uh, by the 19th of February, I will probably, if this does take place, report the news, but I will not be talking about it anymore. Russia's not that significant of a cryptocurrency market for this to be like really popular news or for everyone to kind of forget once again that over the course of the last four to five years, sorry if it sounds like I'm ranting, but doesn't this news seem a, a little weird? Can you imagine... Imagine if the if the United States had announced over the last four to five years that they were going to ban cryptocurrencies. And then out of nowhere, the, we had news eight weeks, four weeks ago from the U.S. that they were going to ban it. And then all of a sudden, now they're going to regulate it as a currency within the country. Imagine if the U.S. SEC over the course of the last seven years, which they have, have not let through any Bitcoin ETF. Yesterday, they announced, hey, you know, we're not going to have any Bitcoin ETFs ever. They're completely evil. And then they announced on Valentine's Day, we are going to let through the first Bitcoin ETF. You would go, what happened? What changed? What was the, was there ever going to be a ban at all? So anyway, this was the most popular news story of the day. Something is, is amiss. I, I can't be the only one who, who feels that in the air, especially with all the news that we've been getting over the last couple of years and two weeks ago that this was going to be banned. However, a lot of people are oddly optimistic about countries uh, who've been trying to manipulate the price of the market, announcing that they're going to legalize it. So that's the sure. And what is it? About nine, nine, ten days. It should be legal within Russia. And without further ado, let's move on. Also in very popular news, <clears throat> the stock price of GameStop surged by 13% in one day amid rumors circulating online regarding a partnership with Microsoft and that they're apparently working on an NFT game. At the time of writing, GameStop is around $115, blah, 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 blah. GameStop started February at around $100 and has been pumping this month on the back of their partnership with NFT-focused Layer 2 Ethereum Scaling Solution. That's a long sentence. Immutable X to develop its upcoming NFT marketplace. Yeah, I think we heard about this no more than a couple days ago. As part of the deal... GameStop is also rolling out a 100 million... Yeah, yeah, we heard about this before. Uh, the latest rumor circulating via channels such as Reddit and Twitter suggests that GameStop may be teaming up with Microsoft to launch NFT integrations into existing games along with creating new NFT-focused games. So, this is, I mean, speculation on another level. If this news is true, and it's not exactly out of the realm of possibility, we had news... At the beginning of January, somewhere around there, that Microsoft, I believe, has purchased Blizzard and therefore they were doing it for some type of an NFT cryptocurrency metaverse integration kind of thing. So GameStop, while they are not as large as they used to be when I was a kid, is still absolutely gigantic and still a relative gaming household name. So the idea of Mar Marco Shift. Microsoft, geez louise, trying to either uh, partner with them and or soft acquire them, which we could also get news about at some point as well, is not out of the realm of possibility. But a lot of the rumors that keep popping up usually just end up being rumors. Uh, I would wait, just logically, uh, to see if this actually ends up being a thing. Uh, it seems totally believable, especially as we've seen Microsoft over the last year inching further and further into the cryptocurrency space. I'm very interested to see what NFT games will look like. And I mean more so, uh, the last NFT-based games that have popped up over the last two to three years have looked a bit like, not even Mario 64. I mean, Super Mario 
brothers like on the NES kind of, you know, graphics based. Uh, anyway, that's just my own weird opinion. So yeah, the news is apparently Microsoft, GameStop working together, NFT gaming. No one knows if it's going to happen, but apparently it's a gigantic rumor that is floating around out there. Could be cool. Let's wait and see. Could be massive, but nobody knows. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up in a in a bit of news I missed, mobile payment service Cash App has revealed that the Lightning Network can now be used to transfer Bitcoin throughout the app. With the new feature, its users can send their Bitcoin to any Lightning or any on-chain Bitcoin address. Here's the tweet for it right there. A few weeks ago, the company announced through a notification within the app that it had integrated the Lightning Network. Now, users can finally use the feature and utilize the benefits that the, that the Bitcoin Lightning Network brings into everyday Bitcoin transactions. That was also a weird sentence. To use the Lightning Network on Cash App, users need to scan a Lightning QR code using their camera, confirm the details of the payment, and tap on pay. All of that seems completely logical. So... This is tremendous, but it's also not surprising because I'm pretty sure that uh, Jack Dorsey is the head CEO, King Kahuna of the uh, Lightning, I mean, of, of Cash App. And he's been talking about integrating Bitcoin and the Lightning Network into basically every single thing that he owns and or touches. We also had news about that before uh, for Twitter that they were planning on offering, um, what was it? Uh, integrating Bitcoin, I think adding NFTs onto the platform, having the Lightning Network also integrated into Twitter so that people could tip with Bitcoin, but through like Satoshis as well. So this is hyper significant. It wasn't the most popular news that I assumed that it was going to be. I think it should have been a bit larger. The The massive amount of Bitcoin adoption continues to surprise me no matter how long I've, I've been in the market and the fact that no one pays attention to it or the fact that a country who's mentioned multiple times that they were planning on banning it made more news than the fact I'm, I'm I don't use cash app myself but I know it's incredibly popular we also had news before there was some other major app uh that also integrated Bitcoin or, or lightning network for cryptocurrency payments and and I think this was a month ago that also had like one article. So anyway, we will eventually be able to pay with Bitcoin for everything, everywhere, especially through the Lightning Network. In 2019, I was saying, I wonder how quickly the Lightning uh, Network would have to or would be adopted for Bitcoin payments. Because the idea from all the mega institutions was that everyone would be paying in Bitcoin by the year 2030. And I was like, well, you're going to need the Lightning Network because no one's paying a $28 transaction fee for Bitcoin. And now here we are. Lightning Network continues to expand. It has more nodes all the time. There's more money being pushed inside of it. And it's quite fascinating. Yeah. That's the uh, Lightning Network news. Should have been more popular. And yeah. Let's move on. And to finish things off, users of Japanese message giant Line will soon be able to use the app's native token for payments at select online merchants in a limited trial. In a Tuesday announcement, the Line Corporation said that starting on the 16th of March, users would have the option of paying with the Link token, not to be confused with Chainlink. And part of the Line's pay online merchants, the trial period, which will run, is already running since the 26th of December, is aimed at testing real-life use cases for the tokens in addition to increasing the convenience and number of payment options for its users. I think part of the big news is that they're um, announcing that they're thinking of considering adding Bitcoin and Ethereum payments to the app as well in the future. I saw this news and it immediately like flashed in my mind. Of There were, mo I think, three different messaging, texting, SMS apps uh, around the United States and also in the in the European Union, I'm pretty sure, and in the UK, that announced that they also were thinking of making their own cryptocurrencies. Uh, and then the moment that the US SEC, the CFTC, I think also Congress heard about it as well, these, these were completely all shut down and they all had troubles uh, with the SEC immediately following the, the announcement of their 
uh, crypto coin launch. So this probably will never ever launch in the United States the same exact way that they went after uh, Facebook coin as well. Anything that even looks remotely similar to or could be used outside of the US dollar is always a a red flag for uh, politicians. So yeah, I mean, I think it's cool that other countries are allowing you know, their messaging apps to also have their own coins and their own digital currencies. And I wonder if there will ever be a day where another country will do the same. Probably not. I, I, I just assume what's there is there. And, you know, anyway, that's the line news. I remember saying that years ago, like Japanese line. Weird. Must have been years ago. All righty. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. GBU Wally, formerly known as Professor Wally, Darren Davis, How's Life Austin, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on. Chris, Hakeem Wilkins, Empire Queen, Stake It With Valor, FUD, Wiser, Mortified, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambrosky, The Dealer's Den, Red Plump Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki. The letter M, not brain, Captain something in the Z-Way lay, Crypto Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 65, 5 and Carlos was like, Mobarazzi, Jojo Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Corded Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pater Noster, Conan Doskip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banan. Where am I? There we go. Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Anima Reader, Ebibiophobia, Todd, Mullis, Adam, Graysick, Moha Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness Monks Corner Staff, I think I actually lost my place, Anytime Fitness Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger of Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much for your continued support. I was sitting in a, in a cafe with my friend a couple of weeks ago, and I gave him my phone and I showed him the, the list and he was asking if I knew it by heart. And I, I think I knew 99% of, of, of them by heart. It's really fascinating. Thank you all once again very, very much for your support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. Thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. Thank you to everyone who is a purchaser of art. I have taken notice. Thank you very, very much. I do appreciate it as well. If you are still here watching me in this video, Write in the comment section the words, yup, still here. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at $43,568. It is down by exactly 1%. Ethereum is up by 0.20%. Really weird movements like, like we've all been seeing for the last couple of years. This is a very odd movement to go from this to this to completely sideways, to back down. What a market to be in. The rest of the market is slightly down. XRP is currently up by 0.27%. The market is down, but not like dramatically down, um, which is very nice to see. Litecoin is currently up by 1.55%. Um, wow. Leo is up by 52%. That is a very dramatic increase. Okay, they only have $43 million worth of trading volume, so you can pump up the price with like $30 million very, very easily. But still, that's a significant movement up. And if only Bitcoin and Ethereum had movements like that. OKB is up by 2.57%. Decentraland is up by 5.5%. We, we typically see C Yeah, there we go. Sandbox is also up by 3.2%. Uh, I've noticed the trend that anytime we get a, a significant amount of uh, metaverse news, the decentralized metaverse places uh, tend to shoot up in price as well. I guess it's like a runoff in price from everything else. Uh, Ethereum Classic is up by 7%. Tezos is up by 11.5% as well. IOTA. What's going on? IOTA is up by 7.7%. Not the strongest trading volume, but I mean, they deserve an actual reward and award uh, for staying within the top 50 
with no news. It is quite uh, phenomenal. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having, might have, continue to have a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be on this wacky, wacky planet. I do hope that it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, supporting, or just being a good person. (laughs) And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.